Okay, let's have a look at how we measure the quantity of heat that a substance contains. Now to do this we need to bear one thing in mind. The amount of heat or energy, thermal energy in an object, in an object depends upon more than just the temperature. So we've got four experiments set up. Let's go through them. To each of four beakers that are at 25 degrees C and 100 grams of water, we're going to add one of four things. In the first one, we're going to add 10 grams of water at 100 degrees C. And we find that our final temperature, once it reaches equilibrium, will be 32 degrees C. If we double the mass, we find that our final temperature, oh, sorry, double the mass, same temperature, and it's water, we find that our final temperature will be 37 and a half degrees. If we change the substance, but have the same mass as the second one, we find that our final temperature is 26 and a half degrees, so lower than the second one. And finally, if we start with the same mass as the first one, but we lower the temperature to 50 degrees, this time our temperature is 28 degrees C. So these particular experiments tell us three things. First of all, heat, or change in heat, depends on the mass being added, or the mass in the system. So from the first to the second experiment, we doubled the mass of the water coming in. We found that the water, the final water temperature was higher. Now it wasn't double, but it was certainly higher. The heat also depends on temperature. So from the first to the fourth experiments, where we added the same mass, but we changed the temperature, we found that there was a difference in temperature as well. So the lower the mass, the lower the final temperature in this case. And finally, heat also depends on the substance that we add to the system. So we added 20 grams of water, 20 grams of copper. The final temperature with the water at 100 degrees C was much higher than the copper at 100 degrees C. So this points us to three things. We must have mass involved, we must have a change in temperature involved, and it also depends on the substance. So before we look at the equation or derive the equation, there's one more little thing we need to look at, and that is this definition of specific heat capacity. We saw in our third conclusion that we had a dependence on the substance in our system. So we can define this specific heat capacity for any substance as the heat required to raise the temperature of one of an object of a one gram object by one Kelvin or one degree C. We can use those interchangeably, and you often see them used as either. 1K or 1 degree C. So with this definition in mind, we can actually look at the specific heat capacities of various substances. So we've got aluminium, carbon, lead, mercury, water and ethanol. And we see that their specific heat capacities, which we denote with the letter C, changes significantly. On the one hand, we've got water with a very high specific heat capacity, compared with lead and mercury. So lead and mercury are able to absorb a little bit of heat and change temperature quite rapidly. On the other hand, water, and it's no surprise that we're 70% water because water can absorb a lot of energy without changing temperature significantly. So now that we've had a look at specific heat capacities, let's join together all the information that we have to define how to calculate the quantity of heat in a substance. So we say that the amount of heat energy in the substance is equal to the mass of the substance, in our first conclusion, times the specific heat capacity, the third conclusion that we came to, times the change in temperature. And this will give us the change in heat. So we can shorten this and we denote the amount of heat energy as Q, our mass of the substance is M, our C from our specific heat capacity, and the change in temperature will always be the second temperature minus the first temperature. And we can write that a little bit shorter as Q equals MC delta T. So let's see how we use it. We have a question that says calculate the heat required to raise 155 grams of water from 17 degrees C to 35 degrees. So we write down what we know. Our mass is 155 grams. 
Final temperature is 35.5, initial temperature is 17.0. Our specific heat for water is 4.18 joules per Kelvin. We've got different units here, per gram. Now the per Kelvin is used interchangeably with sorry, per degree Celsius. So we've got this measured in Celsius, so we can actually change that to per Celsius as well. So we get our, our unknown is Q, so we want to calculate Q is equal to MC delta T. We put our numbers in and we come out with a value of 1.2 by 10 to the fourth joules or 12.0 kilojoules. Does this number make sense? Well, we ask the question, we're going from 17 degrees to 35, so it's absorbing energy. So yes, the number does make sense to us. Let's do a second part. This time we're going to go from 35.5 to 15.0 degrees C. Once again, we've got the same, same question, but this time our numbers switch for our T2 and T1. And that gives us a negative value for our um, energy, or our heat energy. So what does this mean? Well, if the sign for Q is positive, then heat is absorbed. If the sign for Q is negative, then heat is liberated. So we've got to make sure we get that sign right. And it comes down to what we put as T2 and T1.